dangerous. Hey, how are you? How are you? Hey, Justin, how are you? See? You good? Cool. Um, so, guys, yeah, welcome to, welcome to Artisti. Um, Lily and Matta, and how's the coffee? Yeah, delicious, eh? Nice. Yeah, we're all set up. Awesome, that's good to hear. Um, got some stuff out the back, guys. Can come out and uh, have a look at it? Yeah, no worries. Guys, what we've got here for you today, um, we've got your plan, so yep. thanks for sending that through. Um, and then we've got um, our coffees, which we're going to yep. taste in a second. We're going to do a cupping, and that allows us to take you through the range of flavours that you can get from different blends and single origins as well. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we'd love to hear more about where you're at with the, with the trailer. Great. Yeah. So Yeah, we have a lot of questions <laughs> awesome. for you guys. But we're happy to take you through it. So, um, how is the trailer going? Where are you at? We're at the shell stage, um, so at the moment they're finishing off the exterior, um, which is why we're also trying to decide on a coffee and a machine and everything like that because we're about to do the internal fit out, okay. which requires all the information we can possibly give them to get it right. Okay, and this is the plan that they've sent through, is this locked in or? No, that's, no. that's just the general layout of what yeah. the fans come as, so yeah. you can modify it to suit your needs, whether it's donut van, coffee van, whatever. Okay, cool. Because um, at, at a glance, it's, it's really great to have that info, but there are a lot of little things you need to, um, to think about so that when it is designed and you're working in it, it's got a great workflow, uh, everything's um, easy to reach and easy to access yeah. um, so that you can pump out the volume that makes it profitable for you. Yeah, um, right, awesome. Yeah. So with your, um, your research and, and just looking at the plan here, what thoughts or concerns have you got at the moment? Um, Regarding machine, so we have gone for the larger window because we want, to, we want it to be quite open, but we also want to get quite a pretty machine and have that here. Because ideally, sure. or you know, whichever side works, because ideally it will be one of us in the van most of the time. So we need to be able to talk to the customer and take orders while we're working on the machine. So that's why we've gone the bigger window. Yep. Um, Refrigeration and layout is probably the other two, and power are probably the others. Cool. Yeah, well basically I <coughs> don't really know what sort of fridges to run, or I did a little bit of looking, but all I could find was like chest fridges, and yeah. well, they're not going to be any use underneath the bench, so. Okay. Yeah, and the whole world of coffee machines is massive Okay. So as well. Th there's, there are a lot of factors there you've touched on, um, so is the company supplying of these fridges and and these sort of layouts is that what you're thinking well they they, they can, can but i like i don't know like i'd rather get my coffee machine from someone who knows coffee not yep. someone who knows yep. caravans yep so. cool okay so before you mentioned about the machine and the mm. look from from your customer that is super important mm. when you've got one person you definitely want to face your customer you want to be able to acknowledge them but be working as well at the same time yeah and that space has to be your little show that they're going to see, but it's got to be usable. So um, when you look at a layout like this, if you're going to have your grinder in the corner and your coffee machine, then you might have your till in the middle. One person can grind coffee, you can make your shots, froth milk and serve it out yeah. very easily to customers. Okay. Okay, great. If you get a second person that, um, that's involved, one person will stand in the corner here and grind and do shots. The other person can take money, pour out coffees, grab any other cakes or food that you might have, yep. and they'll be serving it out. So you're not really crossing over each other really well because you've got a nice flow. Okay. All right. So that's that's super important. Um, the machine that you put in here is is going to be critical for a look and a feel, yep. but also the quality of the product that you're going to be serving. Um, so I'll come back to machines specifically in a minute, Yeah. but definitely the layout is, is great there. Um, having fridges directly underneath your actual coffee setup can be a little bit restrictive um, in terms of when you're busy and you have to try and open the doors at your yeah. feet and, and which way the door's gonna swing. And um, So there's a little bit of detail there that needs to be covered. 
So if we're going to have our, our grinder, our coffee machine and our service here, um, we've got to look at the power requirements, the water requirements mm. for your whole trailer. Um, what you need to sort of plan a bit more is, is the whole package and how you're going to power it up. Yeah. So um, what are you going to do for food offerings? What, what are you got planning on offering? Uh, like sweets and treats, sort of like your like raw slices and protein balls, that sort of stuff, and um, yep. uh, toasted sandwiches. Yeah. Okay. So a sandwich press. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. And um, a display fridge or any other kind of refrigeration the customers can see what you're doing, or is it? Well, it's a it's a tough one because if you have a display fridge, how do you do it? You don't want to take up bench space, but then. Yep. Yeah, like we thought, do we have food on display, like just one in each thing or something like that? We're still not sure. For sure. So when your customer walks up, you really got to think about their experience. So yeah. you can have a menu board and all these things written out. Yeah. But seeing something is going to make them want to buy it. Yeah. 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 So if you can get something on display, make it look attractive, they're literally going to know you've got coffee. Yeah. Um, or chai's, whatever you're going to do. Yeah. Um, but if they can see a great treat or a really nice presented sandwich or whatever you're going to yeah. have, they will just go, I'll have one of those things. Yeah. yeah. They eat it while they're waiting for their coffee. Correct. How um, would you do that in this then? Because that's our only bench space. Yep. There are a couple of different things you can do. Obviously, you can have um, displays sitting on top, little domes and cakes and things like that. Yeah. It's just not going to be refrigerated. Yeah. So you could be really careful of the, the food safety hygiene Yeah, you can't there. sell that. Yep. If you can have a display that is under the counter that they can see that you can access from this side is amazing. Ah. So, like so a like a two-way display. Yep, two-way yeah. display. So they can see it from the outside, but you can access it from the inside. Okay. And as they're walking up, if you've got a couple of people that are ordering, you know, in the middle here, yeah. you can they, the other people can see what's going on. Yeah. And they can still read a menu board if you've got it on the side. Yeah. But it just makes your process that when they come right up to the front and they're about to order, they know what's going on. And you don't have to explain your whole menu of, I've got four different types of sandwiches. Yeah. One's a roast beef, one's a ham, one's a salami. And explain all the toppings because they can see it very easily. Yeah. And you're going to get your ordering process yeah. up a lot quicker. Impulse buy like at the supermarkets with your candy bars <laughs> yeah. at the yeah. counter. I exactly. Yep. Because that would be eye level, under bench there. If yep. the customer standing in front of the caravan would be their eye level. Correct. So yeah. with caravans and trailers, you can be quite high. Yeah. And, and you don't yeah. want to be too opposing on people. Yeah. Um, but also, yeah, having that so they can see what's going on and just you ordering quickly. If there's one of you, you don't want to take all your time explaining the whole menu. No. When you could pumping out coffees. Yeah. And then just order at the same time. Okay. That's so, interesting. Yeah, I'll show you a few examples of that. Um, of how that's been done in other vans. Okay. If you can do it right, it, it is amazing. Yeah, yeah. And you're going to sell more. Sweet. All right. Um, so as you come around um, this bench here, um, mm -hmm. where are you going to put this sandwich press and food prep? What's your plan? Well, we were looking, like you said, if you continue this way, I guess you would probably have, because we've got to think about where power is. So power comes in these spots yes, as standard. standard. You've got two, um, two power points two there, two there, two there, two there. So you'd probably have your press plugged in here somewhere so that you continue over, grab it out, put it in, and then you'd come back straight away, I guess, and you're just grabbing and yep. handing out, really. Um, and that's kind of, like, all this is food prep area. Like, these are all stainless steel benches, whereas this is a timber bench, so this is kind of really where we want to keep all the food. Okay. So... When you look at your menu, you'll have to write out your whole menu. Yeah. Write out what you're going to be serving it in. Yeah. And what needs to be done to that from coming out of a fridge to then be served. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So you literally want to track how each item you sell from your till gets taken out of a fridge, mm -hmm. has to be cut, put in a sandwich press, mm -hmm. goes into some packaging and goes back to a customer. Yeah. And that will help you with your workflow so that it is nice and streamlined very easily. Yeah. So if you do have a display fridge at the front and it can be taken out and put in a bag, you'd need to have your takeaway bags and things right maybe there. near you. Yeah. Yep. Or if it's hot, all your hots might be done on the back here and your sandwich press might be straight opposite the fridge. Yeah. So it is oh, yeah. Yeah. grabbing the item, turning around, putting it on and just coming straight back. Okay, cool. So the less that you can move in a small setup, um, the quicker and faster the you better. can be able to producing things. Yeah. yeah. 
Ideally, we would love for this to almost be a bit of a display section, section as well because we do want to highlight the products that we choose to go with. Um, sure. we, we put a lot of thought into the brands that we want to stand by. So, yep. So, your, that, what yeah. your customers are going to see is, is from the here. windows through. Yeah. And back. Yeah. So, yeah, having something there they can see. Um, whether there's so many retail products, you know, if you're going to put coffee bags or your um, any sort of teas takeaway teas like or anything yeah. you're going to sell extra, yeah, yeah. Um, the soys or whatever you may have, you know, yeah. um, that's probably up higher is going to be maybe yeah. good for that. Yeah. Yep. So that's okay. great. Cool. And when you said about power points, just want to come back to to that. You, they're going to be above bench height or below bench height. Um, there's one one above, mm. one below. In each corner. Yep. And they're a double. And uh, we've actually opted for two 15 amp outlets as well. As well. So just to give us just in case, you know, yep. I've, I've seen most of the machines at 15 amps. So, but Great. then it's you know we've got to see what sort of generator and we're going to have to get and yeah. how much power we're going to be drawing. Yeah. Correct. So when you think about power, power is a whole really interesting discussion. It's daunting. It is. Um, so really at the moment if you, if you look at power where we've got a grinder, um, a coffee machine, mm. uh, maybe an iPad or a till or something like that. Yeah. You're going to have to think about charging your phones or, or FPOS terminals. Yeah. Um, sandwich press. Your sandwich fridges. press. And then fridges. Yeah. yeah. And is there a freezer there as well? Yeah. Because you may want to, when it gets hot, coffee can be maybe a bit lower, but the ice drinks would have to come into it. Yeah. Yeah. If that's something, you're going to put a blender into it. Yeah. Or a milkshake maker. Yeah. So you're starting to get a different sort of area for cold drinks as to hot drinks. Yep. Yeah. Right. yeah. So what you need to do is add up all of that plus mm. the pump that's going to run the water mm. and the lighting that you've got. Yeah. So once you get those numbers all um, added up basically, how much wattage that you're consuming as a maximum, um, you'd have to look at a generator. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have you looked into generators at all? Uh, briefly, but all I can see is that they're expensive. Yeah, and because we don't know what we need, yeah. like you don't know if you need a small generator or a big generator, because like we sure. can plug it in at home, and if we do events, you can plug it in. But then, ideally, to run it independently gives you so much more flexibility with where you can go. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. You know, if you're doing an event like a wedding or something like yeah. that, and they put you out under the beautiful tree, yeah, you, you want to be able to, yeah. you know, create the same products under a nice, nice yeah. location. Yeah. yeah, but then you don't want to be noisy. So we need to look into generator noise as well. Definitely. So your, your whole trailer will be wired up to be mains power operated. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, when you go to a generator, you need to you need to spend some good money on a generator. Yeah. It is the, the heart and soul of your system when you're not um, powered up from mains. And the harder it's going to work, the louder it's going to be. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of people want to save money on a generator, um, but the reality is by going a lower um, KVA or power output, yeah. um, it's going to make it run at that capacity, which will wear it out quicker, mm. make more noise, um, and be less consistent in its power supply. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So definitely don't underspend on a generator. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. I guess it'll just it's have like to wait until tool. we've we know decided what on what we're doing. And yeah. Yep. Then sure. we'll go from there. So what we'll do is. We'll write a list of all the things you're going to put in this van yeah. and get the power, you know, sorted out. The key thing that we're going to be looking at is the coffee machine. Mm. Um, a lot of portable vendors um, look at Expo Bar coffee machines or Awaga Bagasso. They're really common machines. They're easy to fix. They're pretty bulletproof when you're bouncing around in a trailer yeah. because that can happen a lot. But there is an element of um, quality in the cup that you're going to be reducing. Yeah. All right. So you've either got something that has a lot of power to generate a lot of steam and a lot of hot water and allow it to um, give you a lot of volume in a certain amount of time, um, which is a 15 amp machine. Yeah. So it's like a really big kettle um, and drawing a lot of, of, um, of power to keep reboiling all the time. And then all the heads as well. Like we've seen one, some with like four heads and that just seems yep. like so not at our skill level either to have that many on the go. Sure. So a forehead machine is something you'd see in a, in a cafe. Yeah. Um, it draws a lot of power yeah. and it's designed for a lot of volume. Yeah. Um, what we're really looking at here is some smaller measurements. So it's going to be a compact machine. Mm. It's going to be about 540 odd wide. So about the same width of these, one of these fridges, allowing you to have plenty of bench space to be able to still 
do your sweeps, take orders, um, because your whole length here is actually not that big. Um, what is that width of that window? About, about 1.7 1, 1. I think. Yeah. 1.7. Okay, so you've got 1.7 of display space. We don't want to fill it all up with just coffee machines. Yeah. So, um, these other machines, they um, have compromise. Okay, in the mm. temperature of the water coming through the brew head, the quality of the steam, uh, and the functionality of that actual machine, giving you a better flavour to a cup. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, um, I'll show you those different machines, but I really want to show you one we've got on display. Cool. Okay, All right. So awesome. if we're looking for quality, uh, an amazing look and feel that's going yeah. to really suit this amazing you know, Spitfire Caravan you're getting done, yeah. um, and and customize it or, or put it into you know look and feel of who you guys are. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd highly recommend the Lamazaco Linear Mini. Um, okay. It's just a really amazing machine. So Sweet. yeah. So guys, this is the Lamazaco Linear Mini that we're looking at. Okay. Um, it's a beautiful machine. Uh, it's an Italian uh, made machine, and it is a double boiler. So it's nice and compact, isn't it? It's small, neat, yeah. tidy, it's got an amazing look to it, um, and it's only 10 amp power. Oh, sweet. Ah. Okay. So there's not a lot of is machines. Is common in a coffee machine? No. No, okay. Not in this size. So it's got two boilers, one for steam and hot water, yep. and one just for brewing in the head. So it allows that to um, pump out heaps of steam, heaps of hot water, but then give you full flexibility on how you're going to brew your coffee. Mm. So we change temperatures usually when we're looking at different blends. Uh, this allows us to match to any coffee that you're looking at. Mm, cool. cool, that's good because okay. yeah, we're, we're not going for the food truck style of things. So we yeah. wanna, we'd rather produce a, a good product rather than you know a, a hundred mediocre coffees, we'd rather yeah. do 50 great coffees. Yeah, sure. There's no point in picking beautiful beans and have, putting all the work into a nice van to just have Yep. A machine that doesn't perform that well and it looks fantastic. Definitely. So this is the same brand as the machine yeah. over there. Yeah, okay. And it has the heart and soul of everything that's in there. Yeah. Just in that small compact machine. Okay, cool. Now it is a one head machine. Yeah. But if you're going to look at quality, consistency and an amazing cup of coffee, um, it's still compact enough to have another one sitting side by side. Ah, cool. that would look great. Alright, so yeah. you can have two beautiful machines. Uh, if you get busy, you can upgrade, obviously, to have two. Yeah. And again, still two, lots of 10 amp power. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so that's definitely um, a machine I'd, I'd recommend. Mm. And an automatic grinder, something like a, a Mazza, which just has an electronic dosing on it. Yeah. Okay. So you can basically press yeah. this one for a double, yeah. this one for a single. It'll give you the timed amount of coffee that you need for that handle. Okay. All right. Uh, it's got a nice big hopper. It's going to allow you to, you know, still get through some volume but so much easier just to be able to put it in, press a button, bring it over and lock it in and keep moving through that volume when there's one person. Yeah. There's no, you don't have to do the lever pressing or, or wasting a lot of time there as well. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And what's like, cause we only like, cause that one's got one head. What's yep. the, what's it like consistently? Like if we're going coffee, 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 coffee. Yep. It's going to keep up cause it's okay. two boilers, yeah. not one boiler trying to do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Is that, is that 10 amp or is that 15 amp? 10 amp and 10 amp. Cool. Yep. Great. It's a very low power wattage. Um, this is a conical grinder. Um, so it actually has a different type of burr in it and the motor runs lower um, in, in speed, yep. but also lower in power. Mm. Okay. So a lot of flat burr grinders have a bigger motor to, to churn along and a yep. higher power wattage. Yeah. So we do recommend this one a lot in uh, portable setups. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, and you can customize this. So if you want um, a red machine, green machine, blue machine, yep. whatever, you can pull the panels off and, and paint them really easily. Uh, it comes in a range of colors as well. Um, and you can match that with a grinder if you need to. So it's, okay. it's just gonna look really nice and pretty when your customers walk up. Yeah, cool. Yeah. All right. uh, it's got bucket loads of steam. It's gonna go all day. Um, yeah, as long as you look after them. And what's like water requirements? How, what are you looking at for a machine like that? Yep, so it can be plumb, just like a normal commercial machine. Yep. Uh, or underneath here, um, this is quite a large drip tray. And you've got a three litre water storage in there as well. Oh, that's okay. Perfect. So if you want to, you can just fill it up from there um, and pump out quite a few coffees. Yep. Or you can have it plumb from a tank underneath. Yep. And what would you look at size wise? for a tank for a machine like that? Like do you 
So most caravans have usually like 90 litre uh, okay. fresh water. Yeah. And you might do a 60 litre grey tank yep. for all your waste and things like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that should get you through a reasonable event, but you're always going to have those jerry cans somewhere with extra water just yeah. in yeah. case. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, and filtered water. So whatever you're putting in there, you've got to make sure it is filtered. Yeah. So that um, the coffee machine gets beautifully nice water. It's not going to wreck the inside of the machine. Yeah. But it's also going to affect the flavour of the actual coffee as well. Okay. Cool. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, because with um, council regulations as well, I believe it has to be filtered yep. or treated water. Treated water. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So anything that comes from main supply is yeah. essentially treated. Yeah, it's treated, so yep. it's fine. Yeah. But then you want to further filter it through the machine. We want to remove some of the stuff out of there. That yeah. Made. Yeah. Okay. Definitely for a coffee machine. Okay. So, yep. Uh, if you're working at night, just a little thing. It does have. Um, some lights as well, so you're about to see what's going on. If you've got a nice little mood sort of light going on in a in a wedding or something like yep. that, you better see what you're doing as well. So you're just not going to get that on any of these other machines. Okay. Cool. So I want to take you through um, our different coffees and explain about blends versus single origins, and then we're going to go and taste some. So you've been talking about being healthy and um, maybe organic and yeah. and those raw style foods. Yeah. So. Um, Working out which coffee is going to suit that is, is going to be key to you know success with your customers. So we have the Fix, which is our stronger, more full-bodied style coffee. We have our Champion, which is what we call our everyday hero. So it's yeah. a nice milk chocolate, a um, little bit of star anise, and a very smooth coffee. Then we've got our Delicate, um, and as we say, organic. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. We get that people want those um, that traceability and those flavors that come through from an organic product. Yeah. We also then have our decaf, um, which is what we call placebo. Uh, it is That's a great name. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people comment on it and yeah. love it. So we do want to lift up decaf um, for mums that are yeah. you know, um, breastfeeding or people that just have allergies. Uh, it's a beautiful Colombian water processed coffee. So um, it's a great uh, addition to it. Then if you're going to offer something unique for black coffee, we'd look at a single origin. So these are all blends. Yep. Some of these coffees are used to make up these blends and get a specific flavour that we're chasing. Okay. Where these are unique flavours from that farm or the estate that's highlighting um, a Brazil coffee or a Colombian. Just one farm, one flavour. Cool. Okay, so we'll taste yeah. that as well. Um, we showed you some green bean earlier. Mm. Um, any guesses as to what that is? Off beans. Yep, they look a bit funky, don't they? Yep. Yep. So is that your decaf? That is decaf. Yes. Ah. So it is processed prior to us getting it. Yeah. Um, it's a water process, so they will remove all of the um, the caffeine out essentially, mm -hmm. and leave them with a caffeine liquid, uh, and they then take some flavours out of that, and then soak that back into the bean, so that we get the bean still tasting like coffee, but they keep the caffeine out. You wouldn't think it's such a process. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge process. Yeah. Um, not a lot of countries around the world deal with it, but um, we get a really nice uh, organic product to be able to offer that. Yeah. Does that um, mean decaf costs more because there's more of a process to it? Or? Yes, it is definitely. Yeah. There's there's a there is a fee that um, that's added to that as well. Um, so yeah, that'll roast up, and uh, we've got some decaf over here that we're going to taste. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. Great. Cool. go through and taste the different blends. Mm -hmm. We'll start down this end and work our way through to the single origin and decafs. We're going to slurp it, okay, and um, then spit it out. We don't want to be tasting every single sample. It could be a bit too much for you. So we're just going to go shallow and take a nice little sample and slurp it and get a lot of air into it. That was a good slurp. Alright, yep, and spit it out. Um, so give it a go, work your way along. Alright. And just think about the different flavours you're going to have as well. Yeah. Oh, thanks. There's the subtle flavours. Mm. 
<laughs> you got the lose, you got to drink the leftovers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, guys, it's is there anything yeah that's tasting nicer or um, standing out to you in those coffees? Um, the first one's like quite strong. Um, probably that one I find a bit stronger. Um, we kind of like a smooth, soft. I, I found coffee. probably the delicate or the no, um, or the single origin probably yeah. the nicest. Yep. Fix. So with all those flavors, you you sort of said the organic you know, suited what you guys like and taste, but also yeah. it's going to pair really nicely with your you know vegan and and all your you know raw treats and things like that. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's the the product for you guys. Um, what we'll do is we'll put all that together as a pack to you. Mm. Um, I'll, I'll outline a few more things about your trailer and a couple of things we've got to look at. Yeah, great. Um, and uh, shoot that off to you. And yeah, look forward to supporting you guys. Yeah, moving forward. That'll be Sounds great. Sounds good. Cool. Thanks yeah. so much, guys. Thank you. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. See you, Dusty. Bye. Bye.